G'day, it's Kareem here. Welcome to Does It Matter. Um, you get a lot of conversation back and forth in martial arts over, you know, I, I watched an interesting video by Icy Mike, who I do advocate is a very good and hard to hurt channel. Um, saying he's had a bit of a small disagreement with Chu Jitsu guy, who's another really good channel for BJJ, if you're orientated that way. Um, that sounded a bit weird, didn't it? <laughs> if you like BJJ, how's that? <laughs> um, they're having a debate, and I, I tend to lean with Icy Mike towards this point of view. Um, there isn't a martial arts made for small people. I mean, you've heard about judo and jiu-jitsu and aikido and all these different arts. They're made for small people. And we can sort of dispense with aikido. It doesn't work. It's got some good techniques in it, but as a martial art, it's utterly useless. Um, so I'm sorry if you're an Aikido person and you find that offensive. Um, it's a wonderful martial dance. It has some real health benefits. No problems at all with that. Um, it doesn't teach you to fight. And if you think so, um, I don't know, find someone who's competent in MMA or kickboxing and try it out and find out for yourself. Um, you can come to my school and we'll spar with you very nicely and you'll find out how ineffective it is. Um, um, it really isn't. But a lot of these styles developed along the lines that they were saying, oh, there's small people, Wing Chun, developed by uh, a Chinese nun and it's for small people. Um, I've done Wing Chun. I've done Judo extensively. Uh, I've grappled extensively in multiple styles, Jiu Jitsu. I've wrestled for years. They're not designed for small people. And if you're a small person or a smaller person grappling with a much larger person who has a similar skill level, life sucks. Life sucks. <laughs> you're going to learn a lot. You're going to get a lot stronger. But the bigger, stronger person with even some of your skill level can give you a hard time. In my own school, People have come in who've never grappled a day in their life and they grapple with someone much smaller than them who's been grappling for two or three years and they give them a hard time. Now, does the person who's smaller eventually take them down, submit them? Yes. But they're always surprised at what a big, strong person, a larger, stronger person can do to them regardless of their skills and how difficult it is to submit or control someone who is much larger. Now, that's not to say these styles aren't effective. That's not what I'm saying. But they managed to succeed in controlling these people. I've been ragdolled by a Thai master who was many times smaller than me, 60-odd kilos, I was 90-odd. And he threw me around in the clinch without any problems. I've been thrown around and pinned over and over again by a 72-kilo Iranian, and I was 100 kilos. Didn't matter. It didn't matter. And he wasn't even as fit as me. I was fitter than him. I was ripped. <laughs> it didn't matter. He's, just, he's exhausted me and, ex and used me up. All right? He was much smaller than me. So, yes, it can work. But the skill level, the difference in skill level has to be significant. Now, as we trained together over the years as wrestlers, he couldn't do that to me anymore. It got to a point where we were neutral. And then it got to the point where I was overwhelming him even though he's a better wrestler, because there was a point where the skill level didn't overcome the big physical level. The fact that he was aging, getting older, he's a bit older than me, and he was getting fatter and older, and I was getting bigger and more muscular because I was still peaking in my training. It wasn't fair. And that's the same throughout martial arts. People's physical differences matter. We live in a world, you know, PC crazy world, where you know we're constantly being told that these things are fluid and nothing matters. And there's a certain degree of truth to human fluidity. We're very flexible creatures. But the reality is at the end of the day, you're 65 kilos in a jiu-jitsu practitioner and you're engaged with an 85 to 95 kilo jiu-jitsu practitioner, you are at a disadvantage immediately. Now, is that disadvantage offset by your skill level? Possibly. It may well be. But you're still at a starting point disadvantaged. This guy outweighs you by 20 to 30 kilos. He has significantly denser musculature, more musculature at least, 
and more bone. He's just heavier, thicker, and he's going to have more weight that you have to carry. So the idea that size doesn't matter is ludicrous. The idea that martial arts were set up to offset those differences in size is true. It is true. Martial arts were set up to set, offset a whole range of disadvantages. Okay? They were to allow farmers with farming implements to have some chance against trained warriors by creating their own martial codes within their workplaces. It allowed Okinawans and Chinese farmers and monks to develop their own martial codes that gave them at least a chance, a fighting chance, against trained military trained warriors. Um, so yes, martial arts, whether they were orientated from, for the battlefield or for self-defense or for peasants, for, by peasants or priests in, a, in, a, in, a, in the Shaolin temples or in the Soho, the Sohai temples in Japan or anywhere else for that matter, um, or whether they're in the military, they were orientated towards skilling up the individual as much as possible and offsetting any advantages their enemies might have. So there's a certain degree of truth on both sides of the argument as to whether it's designed to favour one group over another. It is. It's designed to favour whoever knows it, whoever trains in it, over other people. But what if you both know the same thing? And that's the thing that often gets ignored. What if you just have two Wing Chun practitioners and the small Wing Chun practitioner is very skillful? I have seen this. I have done this. I am a terrible Wing Chun practitioner. I did it on and off for many years. I'm crap at it. Okay? It's just not something I'm good at. I've got some fairly fast explosive moves in it and the rest of it, uh, uh, my sensitivity is pretty crap, blah, blah, blah. I'm not that good at it. But I can destroy people who are much better at it because I am strong, I am fast, and I have background skills and other styles that give me attribute developments like speed, explosiveness, balance, base from wrestling that make me very hard to move and very hard to resist. So against a smaller person, most of the time I can beat up a person who's much more skillful at Wing Chun than me. It's really, really easy. Okay, and I know a lot of people don't want to hear that, but that's the truth. The person has to be far more skillful than me to even give me a remotely hard time. Okay, or they have to be of a similar size and more skillful, in which case it's a bad day for me. Same goes with grappling, same goes with kickboxing. Large kickboxer, small kickboxer, as long as we're going light, the differences are largely with range. Okay, and the light guy might actually have a speed advantage. But as soon as we're dropping some power in there, the small guy's substantially disadvantaged now. He not only usually has a lesser range ability, uh, he's outraged, but now he's being he's getting a lot of power and weight dropped on him that he can't match or she can't match. And that's going to result in a more likely outcome of well, greater discomfort and certainly uh, a less likely victory if it's a real fight than otherwise. So, again, like most things, the truth rests somewhere in between. Um Small people often develop high skill levels because they have to. My observation training thousands of students over my life has been that small people often develop more skills. Some of the best technicians I've had have been women and small men, by far, easily, comfortably, because they're not big. And they've also been some of the more powerful students I've had too. It's amazing how strong you can get through you know, five, six, seven days a week for years of, of hard training. It's amazing how strong you can get, how powerful you can get. I'm not talking about lifting strength. I'm talking about squeezing and, and squeezing strength, muscle stamina, explosive power delivered. That you, you can you can force amplify that significantly. But the bigger person usually has an advantage if there's even if even remotely close in skill levels. Like I said, I've seen guys come in with no training at all and give trained guys a very hard time, even in kickboxing. After a couple of months, a couple of months, they're getting owned to begin with. And then after a couple of months, they're starting to swing some heavy leg kicks in. 
starting to get a little bit of boxing going, a little bit of clinch going. And all of a sudden they're starting to, you can see the, the smaller senior student starting or intermediate student or even senior student starting to struggle with them and having to amp up their own efforts and really use the skills more and the speed and other attributes more because this guy's just start, this guy, this chick is starting to overwhelm them. This girl, sorry. Some people get offended if you, if you use the uh, colloquial aphorisms. Yeah, they get offended. Anyway, so yeah, it makes a big difference. Size makes a big difference. You can offset it. You know, I don't want to discourage anyone, but you aren't going to completely change the effects of it. If a big guy's on top of you, I've held down people in jiu-jitsu who are much better than me, much better than me, like far more skillful than me. Their tool set was much broader. They were better at the... The, the, they were better at jiu-jitsu, they were better at uh, triangles, oma plata, goga plata. They could do all of those things way better than I can. But I could hold them down, pin them down and pound them out if I wanted to. I didn't, of course. We're friends. Okay, we're training partners at a seminar. I'm not going to smash you because we're training. We're just training. But I could do what I wanted to them. They weren't going anywhere if I didn't want them to go anywhere. I could just hold them down. If I can hold down another 100 kilo guy for a few minutes, and I've done that plenty of times, I can hold you down at 80 kilos or 60 or 70 without without breaking much of a sweat. That's just, that's reality. You need to be really good, much better than me to have a chance of escaping. And I'm still going to give you a hard time because I've got a great top down, ga- a top down wrestling game. It favored my build. So attributes matched to particular skill sets can make someone really hard to deal with. Another example. A big guy, not a great boxer, heavy kicks and a great clinch. Really common combination, by the way. Okay? He's not the fastest, most fluid boxer. He's got some hard punches on the outside, kicks like a bull, and clinches hard with those knees, right? He uses his range well. But he's a beginner. He's only been training for a few months. And you're you're a stud. But you're 20 kilos lighter, 30 kilos lighter or more. He's very dangerous to you. He can hurt you, uh, especially as a beginner. He has no control. He can bang you up. And it makes a difference. When you're training with someone who's bigger, you need to take a big account of the fact that their size is there and also their experience level. When you're training with someone who's bigger and is careless or inexperienced, you need to be exceedingly careful where you allow them to take you. You need to communicate with them if they're being overly rough or injuring you. You need to, don't be staunch about it. That's stupid. You're training, you're not fighting. Be staunch in a fight. In training, communicate. You You need to get through as many reps as possible. You need to rep the quality, yes, but you need to not get injured in the process. It's really important to protect yourself from injury and you need to do that with big people. And that's sort of the second component of what I wanted to talk about is that when you're training with people who are either much more experienced or larger, than you and inexperienced, you need to be very careful. If you up the ante with someone who's far more experienced and you're the bigger, stronger guy, it's a good way to end up getting hurt because the more experienced guy is smaller than you. If you make that person afraid of you because you're so overwhelming and strong and you're doing the ego rush and you're being a spaz, they're going to hurt you and probably for fairly good reason because you're hurting them. Training's not about hurting each other. It's about pushing each other, making each other uncomfortable, causing some discomfort, yes. But it's not about hurting each other and injuring each other, which happens all too often because people are forgetting the purpose of training. Sparring is not fighting. Once you have a fight or two, you'll know the difference between sparring and fighting. I've actually had sparring sessions that injured me far more than my fights. And that's because people sometimes forget sparring is not fighting. It's training. You're simulating some of the aspects of a fight. You can't simulate all of them or you're getting banged up every day. And that's dumb. Size matters. Experience levels matter. Beginners will hurt you. And big beginners are particularly inclined to hurt you. You... Most people control them by hurting them back. Here's the problem with that. You get a big beginner walks into your dojo and hurts you or hurts your students. 
You want to put them in their place. And you kind of do need to do that, especially if there's some ego involved. But one, define the situation. Is the kid scared? Is there, are there a big, strong guy who just is used to dominating people and, and, and it's an ego-based reaction? Then you're going to react to that differently. Is the kid scared? They're spazzing out. Well, then reacting, you'd need to react to that very differently. Do they not know their own strength? Common problem. They don't realize that they're actually using as much energy as they are. I hurt people reasonably frequently, you know, a lot less than I used to, but still occasionally I'll, I'll just be too hard in a way. And I don't mean it, but I'm a big guy. I'm 110 kilos. I've got that old man strength now. And I just, I just, I bump into people a bit hard sometimes. I squeeze a little hard. I don't mean to, but it does happen. Communicate communicate, hey, a little heart hurting, take it easy, bro, you're a big, big, big boy, whatever, okay? If you're a hero and you don't want to say that, I said it to a girl the other day. When we went to the ground, one of my ribs clicked a bit. I must have had a bit of a bind there. And I went, oh, damn. I didn't staunch it out. I lifted her off me a little bit, wiggled my rib around, went, okay, it's okay. It's all right, it was just a click, okay? I showed discomfort i gave her an example of what you should do go oh whoa 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 let me check yeah so yeah it's all good keep going all right and that was with a girl that was with a, a junior student and a girl okay and it's not saying i'm a big wonderful guy or anything like that mr Adva mr enlightened it's because it keeps me safe she can hurt me too so can other people you can hurt each other communicate Say what's comfortable, what's acceptable, and what isn't. And everyone's going to be different. Like I said in a previous video on another topic, life's a fucking negotiation. Negotiate. And if you can't negotiate, you're a dummy. Don't be a dummy because the dojo is no place for dummies. Okay? Grappling in particular, no place for dummies. You're just going to get injured. If your ego gets in the mix, you're not going to be able to fucking survive what goes on over the years. And you'll eventually get injured out of the place. And that's a tragedy. It's sad. Jiu-jitsu, grappling, martial arts are for life. You can do them for the whole of your life, to your 90s if you're lucky, okay? You can enjoy it forever. Be careful with big people. Be careful with junior students. Communicate with them. Work out where they're coming from. Come up with solutions, and there's all kinds of solutions, okay? Maybe they need to roll gently. Maybe you need to roll the big guy with even smaller people or women where he's going to be more careful if he's more careful with women. Maybe he needs to be just with the big guys for a while and used to get, getting pancaked himself and crushed and, and develop a little more empathy. You've got to approach it. But you, if you come at it like a sledgehammer, regardless of whether it's ego-based or fear-based or misunderstandings or poor muscle control or dyspraxia or any of the things that can cause people to be spazzes or unco, if you come at it too hard, too heavy, it's going to go really wrong. You're going to lose a student. And more importantly, you're going to lose, that person's going to lose what I think is one of the best tools that human beings have ever developed for character development and for empathy to learn to be, actually care about other people. Martial arts is brilliant for that. It can be. It can also produce big, fat, well-trained assholes who are just bullies, inveterate bullies. It can do that too. It's a, it's a tool. Okay? Cheers, guys. See you next time.